Hey, you guys. I hope everybody's doing good today. Oh, my goodness. It has been a long day for me. I've been running around crazy, but I'm like, we got to do this green room. A lot of people were requesting that we talk about this in depth. So for y'all who are just joining us, we have over 700 people right now. Thank you guys for coming through. I know it's kind of last minute. I'm like, let me go ahead and send out the alerts. But um, I had did a video about two weeks ago concerning uh, there was a there was a viral story about like Instagram hairstylists and there was a stylist basically saying that she's going to start charging a pregnancy fee, not because we knocked her up, not because we're her baby daddy, but because, you know, we want our hair done and the, you know, because we're inconveniencing her, she should be resting. And I'm like, in no other industry would this be okay. That'd be like somebody saying they're going to charge you more for McDonald's French fries because they're pregnant. Are they going to charge you more for customer service because they're pregnant? And so a lot of people just started really just going in because I don't go to the shop to get my hair done. I haven't been in the shop in ages. And so I was just blown away by the things that's going on right now in the service industry. So everything from people just charging crazy outrageous prices, lack of customer service, um, and it's not just the hair industry. From what I read in the comments, it's the nail shops. You have nail technicians charging anywhere from 100 to upwards of $1,000, depending on, you know, the gems and the rhinestones and the length of the nails. Um, you have hairstylists charging $2,000 for, you know, a dye job, a correction. So it led to like a really, really good discussion on social media where I feel like Instagram has worked a lot of stuff. From what even barbers, even there's a lot of guys even comments saying that these barbers are getting really big headed. You know, they're wanting 150 bucks for a Beijing. Don't get that white chalk outline around your forehead. That's another 50 bucks. So some people are saying like, you know, normal haircuts used to be $25. Now these barbers are charging anywhere from 50 to 100 for a haircut. So a lot of people are raising their prices. And, you know, and I get it, you know, inflation, the economy, you know, certain things charge more, but even makeup artists, you know, charging four or $500 for a face that you're going to wash off at the end of the night. So I feel like Instagram has warped a great deal of perception in our reality. Um, I mean, there's all types of just crazy stories of, you know, people following these new Instagram influencers because the new influencers on Instagram are like the hairstylists, the nail technicians, the makeup artists and things like that. And so a lot of them have gained, you know, as big a, a following as the celebrity clientele. And so if you're working with celebrities, I can kind of understand maybe charging a thousand dollars to glue a wig on somebody's head. To me, that makes no sense to me why you would charge that much for glue. But to charge an average person, you know, three to four hundred dollars to glue a wig on their head, that's not even going to stay past a week, you know, two if they're lucky, I can see if it was a sewing, but just to glue something on somebody's head and they're just charging these prices. And again, people are going to do what you allow them to do. So if you're willing to pay it, you know, bless you. But it's a lot of people where it's leaving a bad taste in people's mouths. And we've come to the conclusion that I, I don't think that we're necessarily paying for a service. I feel at this point, we're paying for people's lifestyles. That's the vibe I'm getting that Instagram has made it where, you know, you can gain a following, you can gain, you know, all these people wanting to support your business. And they feel like because they have a million followers, they can charge thousands of dollars. And now I'm finding out that half these people who are charging these outrageous prices, they're not even licensed. Like, come on, how y'all charging people hundreds of dollars and you're not even a licensed stylist? So when I talk to some of my friends who are licensed, you know, in their particular occupation, be it lashes, nails, um, hair, they're saying that it's messing it up for their industry as well. Because you go to school to get your license and to learn the, the tips and tricks and all that stuff. And you're charging fair prices for the community because this is what you do for a living. It's not a side gig. It's not a hobby. It's not nothing to go viral on TikTok. This is your real job. But because these people have bigger followings, folks will go to them, you know, and spend all this money with them, but then come to the community stylist and want them to do their hair for 50 bucks. 
well, you just paid such and such verified hairstylist on Instagram a thousand, but now you want to give me 50. So I just feel like a lot of things have been warped with not just Instagram, but with social media in general. And then we have on top of that, the whole food out culture. So we're going to hit on a few different things during this entire um, green room. So I want to hit on just the things that y'all are seeing on Instagram, you know, the work perception, even when I did the video topic the other day about food out culture and how a lot of girls don't realize that they're really putting themselves in danger. And it's almost like because it's somebody in your DMs that you're talking to on the internet, it's like people let their guards down that they probably wouldn't if they just met this person on the street. They'd probably be a bit more, you know what I'm saying, wary, but because it's on Instagram or because this person is verified or they're a rapper or they have a following, it's like people throw all common sense out the window. And it's like, yeah, you could fly me out way across the country and I'm just going to, you know, be naive as hell to think that you don't want nothing out of that. You know, somebody's willing to drop two to five thousand dollars to fly you out you know what i'm saying feed you real good take you shopping i'm sure they want a little bit of cooch on the side i'm just saying we're all adults here okay it ain't tricking if you got it so i'm gonna go ahead and take some calls raise your hand if you want to talk i want to know y'all's experiences what are y'all seeing out here in these instagram streets that are just warped in your opinion as far as pricing, people getting big headed, people charging $1,000 to get a full set of nails, people charging $300, $400 for lashes. I mean, I've seen some crazy stuff while scrolling through the streets of Instagram. So I'm gonna start bringing people on. Keep your microphone muted until I call your name. So let's go ahead and start, um, let's see here. Kayla, Kayla, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Kyla, okay, how you doing? Cindy, hey, Tina. Oh my gosh, like with Instagram and everything like that. Like I've gotten, I've gotten like you know, see friends posting and say like, oh, come try my hair, come like come, just comes like do with like do my hair with me, whatever. And I've chosen a few people, and one girl out of particular, I went to school with her, so I'm like, okay, you know, you do hair, you're all good. She do my hair, everything. When I came to her house, I know she had a dog or whatever. Didn't think much of it. Later on, after finishing, you know, I was late. Had to pay a twenty dollar deposit. Was late everything. After she finished, her dog ended up biting me in the face, and she had the nerve. What? Like, twenty dollar deposit. Even though like my hair all together was like seventy dollars, I was like, it's not even worth it trying to sue. I'm just like, chalk it up, never do it again. Just do my own hair. And that was like two years ago. And ever since, mm -hmm. I just do my own hair because I don't trust people. And the ones I do go to, they just basically just do my hair, get my money, and go. No touch ups. I'm no confused. So this was a kitchen stylist, obviously. She's in her house. Why would she not put her dog up? Don't nobody want your dog sniffing their feet and all up in their face? Get that damn mud out of here. <laughs> if, it, if this was a real shop, a dog couldn't walk around. Like, that's crazy to me. Just to sit in your living room, like, why am I paying you to sit in your home? I have to, I don't even have the audacity to sweep up, clean, hair everywhere, like, food everywhere. Like, I just, like, I don't even want to do it. And the people I have went to actual shops. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, you know, now everything's changing prices. And I'm like, what's the point? I'm able to do my hair. I'm good anyway. It is more practice for me. Like... It's just hard to trust people anymore because, like, they make everything look good. You know, they got the Photoshop, all this stuff. Or they pick their best friend, do their hair really good, post it, and attract all these people. But when you sit in their chair, it's, it's not the same. It's not. Yeah, you definitely have to be on a, you know, buyer beware and definitely go off the word of mouth. Well, thank you so much for calling in, Kyle. I'm going to go ahead and bring on the next caller. You're welcome. Okay, let me go ahead um, and bring, and I also want to hear from stylists, nail techs, if you're a barber, feel free to call them. We want to hear from y'all's side too, especially if you're licensed. I want to hear from, from some licensed people as well. So let me go ahead and bring on uh, Jalen Elliott. Go ahead and unmute your microphone. Okay, make sure you guys are ready. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, we can hear can you. you. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. 
Um, personally, my whole opinion on it, I feel like the people who are unlicensed, I feel like, well, for one, they don't have, you would say, like, the proper teaching, right? They didn't go to cosmetology school. A lot of these people are learning from people who might have gone to cosmetology school, but a lot of them are learning from YouTube, you know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of the them University are of online. YouTube. <laughs> Absolutely, there you go. So it's just like, there. I feel like there is so much information and there's so mm-hmm. much, there's so much to learn from YouTube because, you know, there's some girls walking down the street, they could do, you know, like a bomb bust down middle part easily. You know, they learned it from YouTube and there are some people who go to school and you know that's how they get their education now with the stylist I feel like as if if you're a stylist and you're charging an arm and a leg I feel like it should be worth that you know I feel like the quality should be worth that your attention mm-hmm. to detail should be worth that the materials you're using you know I feel like if you're charging out the wall prices why is your conditioner and shampoo from Target I I, I just oh. don't you know I don't feel like that's of quality. I feel like if it's something that I can do myself, of course, everyone can do their own hair, right? But right. if I'm coming to you for a service, it should be of top-notch quality if that's what your prices are. Your prices should reflect your work. And exactly. that's pretty much all I have to say, you know? And what, now piggybacking off of what you said, I've also been hearing that a lot of stylists are now saying they don't wash hair. You need to come with Girl, your hair fully washed and blow dry. <laughs> like, I don't, like, to me, you know, like I said, I don't go in nobody's shop, but that was the point of going to the shop because it was an experience. It was something, you know, not every day, you know, who, I don't want to wash my hair and then go to the shop. You're supposed to do that. And then you're still charging me as if you wash my hair. That doesn't make any sense. There's no discount for you not washing my hair. So why am I still paying the full price, but you're not doing the full service? That's my thing right there. I don't, I don't understand that. You know, I don't understand not washing hair because that's, that's, you know, isn't that, part of the service you know because mm-hmm. of course um, that that would be part of the service like you know I've had some aunties and you know my mom back in the day she used to do hair and you know they would go take you to the bowl wash your hair condition you know sit under the dryer let it sit the deep conditioner stuff like that and, you know you would get your hair pressed and trimmed but no I don't it's, I just feel like it's very far few and in between with stylists nowadays especially with a lot of the, the younger ones um I would say because mm-hmm. seeing on Instagram I see a lot of new age stylists that's not something that they do but you know the girls like the older women who actually still do hair and they've been doing hair for 30 50 years their prices oddly enough haven't really changed that much and their quality is still as good if not better you know from when they first started so I just feel like it's on. it just depends on who you go to and who you trust with your hair. And I feel like people should be very wary of whose hands they allow to touch their scalp and be in their head. So that's pretty much all I have to say. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jalen, for calling in. Good talking to you. You as well. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye. Bye. Okay, let me go ahead and bring on Namichael. You mean nickel tea? You always look me up. <laughs> how you, how you hey, sis, I'm looking like, okay, it looks like Michael, but I don't know. I'm like, no, Michael, nickel. Yes, Empress Nick on um, Discord. I just wanted to touch real quickly on this subject. The la- uh-huh. um, About a few months ago, I washed my hair and everything because I didn't know the procedure. I haven't had my, br- my hair braided in like forever. So... Um, I waited. The young, I said I had to pay a deposit, and I waited almost 30 minutes for this young lady. Mind you, she was sitting in the car, and she had her two little kids. She finally mm-hmm. told me to text. She texted me and told me to come in. She was so unprofessional, c- cursing, everything, talking about smashing. Just on the phone while I'm sitting there, I didn't say anything. As she started braiding my hair, my my hair is thick. I have 4C hair. She told me, um, next time you come in, please make sure that your hair is um, washed and blow dried out easily so I can um, be able to wash, um, so I can be able to do your hair. I end up paying her, she charged me 110. So mm-hmm. with tip and everything, I paid her about $130 because she did do a service. So, but the unprofessionalism and just like the young fellow said, um, Jalen is the younger ones. 
to me, I can't find any of the the elder ones to do my hairs. The younger ones, they're coming and they're having a stipulation of how you um, their business is supposed to run, but yet they are so unprofessional with it. I haven't been back since. I'm not saying she's a, a bad girl. I just didn't love the ambiance. I didn't feel it was welcoming. Never again. So I'll, I will stick to YouTube and try my best to learn on my own. Yeah, people are even saying in the chat that they feel like they're being punished for having 4C hair. Right. Um, somebody else in the chat, and I don't know if she's a stylist, if she wants to um, speak, she can. She says, you must come wash, blow dried, and your hair needs to be at least four inches or longer. Wow. I, I've never heard. I can't help how long my hair is. Or or if I washed it the night, um, the night before, it's go automatically going to revert back to a particular state. And mind you, she didn't have her blow dryer. She didn't have um, enough combs that is needed to go through my hair. So the mm. unpreparedness, the, uh, the um, unprofessionalism, that's, that's what I look at. I'm not about to pay you all my money, my hard earned working money. I know y'all have to pay booth rent. I know, I know this, that, and the third, but it's still the ambiance, the presence that will allow somebody to come back in who is willing to pay. I watch all of that. But that's all I, um, I have to say. Love you, T. You take it easy. Bye, y'all. Love you, too. Thank you, sis. Now, okay. look at Dini in the chat. She says, I learned to do my locks from Lovely T's videos. I haven't had anyone touch my hair since. I know that's right. You give Lovely T a hand clap for teaching the youth 10 years ago how to twist their own locks. Yes, I used to have a hair channel before I started doing commentary. And I had locked two of my nephew's hair. And one cut his hair since, but the other one, Tim's hair is super long to know his back, super thick. It looks like Bob Marley, honey, okay? So, yes, I was teaching folks way back then. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the whole thing is very interesting. Uh, Keys was saying she's not a stylist, but she read that on one of these Instagram, you know, stylist profiles that your hair has to be a certain, you know, length. It needs to be blowed straight. So it seems like they don't really want to do the work. And we understand that 4C hair is a lot of work to do. I mean, it, it is. Let's all keep that real. But at the end of the day, that's part of your job as a stylist. You should be able to do all types of hair if you're a stylist. You can't just pick and choose. Now, I can see charging a little bit extra for hair that might be extra long or, you know, even extra thick. I can see maybe charging like an extra $10. But you'll have people like, no, it's an extra $75 because your hair is too thick. That's a lot of money on top of the initial service, okay? So let me go ahead and bring on my girl, Emily. Emily's in the house. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> oh, here I come. Can you hear me? Sorry. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Emily. Okay, it's storming up here. I'm good. Hey, everybody. Now, I wanted you to call in because you are a, you're a, you cut hair. You yes. Know, you're, are you a barber? Like, is that what they call girls who cut hair? I'm or technically, a, a, I guess if you want to be technical, I'm a master barber. So I'm a barber and a cosmetologist. I'm not but I usually, a master barber. Yeah. You let them know. <laughs> yeah, so I do both, but I primarily, I specialize in men's cuts. I prefer barbering. It's just quicker. It's easier. I make more money and it's less of a headache. But I do also uh, style hair. I do women's hair as well. I do color. I do it all. Huh. Mm -hmm. And I remember we was talking, because you kind of explained to me, because I'm like, why would anybody even want to pay $2,000 to get their hair colored and fixed? And you were uh -huh. explaining to me that some of the products, the shampoos, having to fix somebody else's mistake, and that it's a long process when you're talking about taking somebody from, like, dark, you know, to, like, a platinum blonde there is a lot yeah. of steps to it. Yes, to so blonde, especially blonde is very difficult because when you do blonde, you have to buy like special products. They're they're called called bond builders. So anyways, it just is kind of like insurance. We call it like the seat belt so you don't it doesn't fry your hair off. So mm -hmm. if you want to if you have really dark hair and you're wanting to get to that platinum blonde, excuse me, it it does uh it takes very, very expensive products. It takes a lot of knowledge. It takes a lot of time because you can't just put lightener all over the head. You have to use different developers, um, different peroxide volumes. It, it just is a lot of time. And also the way that the hair develops is different. If someone has really thick, long hair, that's more time. Everything's time. It's calculated. Yeah. Now, let me ask you because you were saying that you prefer...
to deal with male clients and just cut hair, that mm -hmm. it can just be a lot, you know, with the female clients. But do you feel like there's a whole new crop of folks on Instagram where it's very warped with the pricing and how a lot of them are not licensed, but they're charging even more than licensed stylists? Yes, I do. And also, um, you know, the prices of things obviously are going to go up as time goes on, inflation. The products that we use to, to color people's hair, or even the clippers we use, the shears we use to cut the hair, the prices on everything are going up. So obviously prices as a stylist are going to increase, but with that being said, everybody else is being affected by inflation too. So if somebody is willing to pay you their hard-earned money to do their hair, you need to make sure that you're giving them top-tier service. I'm not about to drop $1,000 on nothing and get some shitty bootleg experience. I want to have champagne. I want to have a hookah. I want to have someone engaged. Like, I want it all. you got to go out of your way, especially with YouTube. That's another thing a lot of stylists need to realize. Why would someone pay you $1,000 to do their hair when they feel like they can go online and learn how to do it themselves? That means you better come through and you better bring everything you got and make them feel like you know what it was easier it was more convenient i really enjoyed the experience and i look fire that's the most important thing is as a stylist i feel we're all here to make money but you mm -hmm. need to make sure that whoever comes in your chair when they leave they feel good about themselves that's the biggest like reward to me is that someone is enjoying and and feels good about how they look so these people on instagram are really doing the most it's, especially if they're not licensed i don't care how good you are if you don't have a license then your prices should not be like top tier prices. Hey, tea sippers! To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.